Over the past decade, evidence for sustained human population during the late Upper Paleolithic has been found at several sites in Scotland. Up until that point, it was thought the climatic conditions there at that time had made it practically impossible for survival. Now, a new study has been published in the Journal of Quaternary Science that outlines new evidence for late Upper Paleolithic human habitation at two sites even further north than those that have been found already. It's now become clear that South Kudrak on the Isle of Skye was a hunter-gatherer site that likely belonged to the Arensberg culture. At another site on the Isle of Skye called Sconsa, archaeologists have found circular stone features scattered across a tidal flat that appear to be anthropogenic. Based on an analysis of changing sea levels, they think it's entirely possible Sconsa also dates to the late Upper Paleolithic. These two sites show that people were able to adapt to the harsh climatic conditions on the Isle of Skye during the transition from the Younger Dryas to the early Holocene. In this video, I discuss this paper and the evidence it provides for human habitation in the northwest of Scotland more than 11,000 years ago. Somewhere between 26,000 and 24,000 years ago, the Devensian glaciation in the United Kingdom reached its maximum extent. In Northern Europe and Scandinavia, this glaciation is called the Vexellium, and in the Alps it's called the Verm. Then, around 10,000 years later, the glaciers began to retreat as a result of climatic warming, a time referred to as the Bolling Alarod or Late Glacial Interstadial. This retreat lasted approximately 2,000 years. During the interstadial, humans, flora and fauna made their way northwards from continental Europe. However, a sudden drop in temperature from 12,000 years ago initiated a period we now call the Younger Dryas, named after the alpine tundra wildflower Dryas octopetala. For just over a millennium, the retreating ice sheet started to advance again before warming was abruptly resumed, creating temperatures similar to today. It's not clear what caused the Younger Dryas, but it may have been due to the rerouting of meltwater, which ultimately caused a change in the thermohaline circulation of the North Atlantic Ocean. The sudden end of the Younger Dryas marked the transition from the geological epoch called the Late Pleistocene to the Early Holocene, also called the Pre-Boreal. During these climatic fluctuations, Three cultures identified by their lithic technology were present in Northern Europe. The first was the Hamburg culture that appeared around 15,000 years ago and is known for its shouldered points. Approximately 1,000 years later, it was followed by the Federmesser culture who made small backed flint blades. The Arensberg culture appeared roughly at the onset of the Younger Dryas and remained throughout that period. Over the past decade, evidence for a late Upper Paleolithic human presence in Scotland has been found at several sites, and it suggests three or four different waves of people migrated there during the Bolling Alarod interstadial. This evidence was identified by lithic typology and dated according to those groups' presence in continental Europe. For example, a late Hamburgian lithic assemblage was found at Lowburn in the Upper Clyde Valley. Federmesser lithics were found at Kelmel Fort Cave in Argyll, and Arensbergian points were discovered at Shieldafe in Loch Torridon. Prior to these finds, it was generally accepted that late Paleolithic hunter-gatherers probably did not venture as far north as Scotland due to the difficult conditions. A small amount of evidence indicated an ephemeral presence at best. However, a different picture has begun to emerge over the past few years, and it's now clear that the cultures known to have been present in Northern Europe did also make their way to Scotland. That said, evidence for a sustained presence as far north as the Isle of Skye wasn't confirmed until this latest paper. This figure shows the ice extent of the Loch Lomond Stadial at that time and the locations of late Upper Paleolithic sites. Finding late Upper Paleolithic sites in Scotland is complicated because as a result of the British-Irish ice sheet and the spatial fingerprint melt 
of Farfield ice sheets, many sites probably sit underwater off the west coast. Inland sites from that time have been covered in the peat and bog that started to form 11,000 years ago, and that is 10 metres thick in places. So most evidence comes from lithic assemblages that are not in situ. Since they can be identified from their typology though, all is not lost. However, the information on these late Paleolithic people would be more robust if the artefacts were found in situ. Rapidly fluctuating conditions in Scotland during the latter part of the Younger Dryas and the Early Holocene meant that people had to quickly adapt. They would have had to cope with glacial coverage, melting ice, floods, changing river courses and changing coastlines all within a challenging mountainous landscape. Late Upper Paleolithic populations in the lowlands of Northern Europe would have been faced with difficulties as well, but nothing compared to that in Scotland. In the paper, the researchers analyse a lithic assemblage recovered from the Isle of Skye, as well as offshore circular stone features, all in the context of the climate and environment of the late Upper Paleolithic. They provide new insight into how people adapted to changing conditions at that time. South Kudrak is a coastal area in the north of the Isle of Skye, where over the years, many late Mesolithic lithics have been found scattered on the surface. During the excavation of a new farm track in 2017, a scatter of late Upper Paleolithic lithics were found on a beach, surrounded by a bedrock platform that probably marks a deglacial shoreline. A landward raised beach sealed two in situ late Mesolithic organic deposits from a hearth that were radiocarbon dated and show that the maximum age for the beach having formed is somewhere between 7,028 and 6,853 years ago. The late Upper Paleolithic lithics were found on the beach, embedded in the raised beach and in other sediments close by. Since some of these were heavily rolled, it's likely that they were in a secondary context. As the relative sea level would have been lower during the late glacial period, the area immediately offshore would have been exposed, so it's possible some of the lithics had come from there. A full lithic assemblage was recovered from the area between 2017 and 2023. It contained early and late Mesolithic artefacts, as well as late Upper Paleolithic ones that appeared to belong to the Arensbergian culture, and others from the late Upper Paleolithic that have no cultural markers. The Arensbergian artefacts include tanged point fragments, opposed platform blade technology, complex burins, a scraper and broad blades. The Mesolithic finds are not unusual, but the late Paleolithic finds push the date of a sustained human presence on the island back several thousand years. In central sky sits a large tidal flat called Ribagarb, meaning rough point. It is here that several stone circular structures measuring between three and five meters in diameter were found. The tidal flat is roughly one kilometer long and 0.5 kilometers wide. Walking and drone surveys identified 20 of these circular stone alignments, which can only be seen at the extreme spring tides, so are exposed for around two to three hours per year. In 2022, test pits were dug in two of the circles during a single tidal exposure. Waterlogging and unconsolidated sediments made it difficult to maintain the edges of the trenches and also meant it wasn't possible to reach the natural geological layer at the bottom of the trenches before the tide rose again. The stone structures are made up of boulders that measure between 0.25 and 0.5 metres in diameter. Some are deeply embedded in marine deposits and others sit on lower clay, which would have been a land surface at one point. Although a full excavation of at least several of these features is needed to get a better picture of when and why they were constructed, it does appear that they have an anthropogenic origin. Other intertidal and low tidal alignments on the Scottish west coast are associated with fish traps or the 19th century kelp industry, but have a different morphology to these stone circles. Their location suggests that they predate the modern sea level, so would have been terrestrial features originally. No diagnostic flint artifacts have been found at Sconser, just a non-diagnostic piece of flint found in circle C3. However, a series of 23 circular stone features in Norway, many of which were radiocarbon dated to between 11,070 and 10,438 years ago, are similar to those found at Sconser. This indicates a late Pleistocene or 
early Holocene age. The tidal flat at Sconsa lies within the ice limit of the last glacial maximum. Therefore, the stone structures have to have been built after the ice retreated and at a time when relative sea level was lower following deglaciation. Modeling was carried out to give a better estimate of the date of these features. This gave a date range of between 11,700 and 10,000 years ago, matching the similar structures in Norway. However, without diagnostic lithic artifacts, this is only an estimate. So overall, it does appear that the lithics and stone structures on the Isle of Skye date to the late Upper Paleolithic. They indicate a sustained human presence on the island at that time and show that the people living there likely belonged to the Arensberg culture. For them to have travelled this far north at a time of climatic fluctuations and difficult environmental conditions shows that they had the ability to adapt to their surroundings and take advantage of the resources available to them. It's been suggested that these groups reached the Isle of Skye from what is today Germany and Belgium via Doggerland, the area of the North Sea that was dry land at that time. This is considered more likely than a migration via the south of England. Who knows, in the next few years, archaeologists might find sites even further north than the Isle of Skye. That's it. Thank you everybody for watching. Please hit the like button if you didn't already. A special thank you goes out to my channel members and patrons and I'll see you next time.